I'm going to tell you a story about Carol, about Matthew, and about Jeff. And any resemblance to actual persons or events may or may not be purely coincidental. But first, I'm going to take you back a bit. My undergraduate uh, course, my undergraduate major, was in computer science. And it's not a major that I picked directly. My parents, who had seen the shift of the times, picked it for me. I honestly did not want to do it, but I was the child, they were the parents, they were paying the fees. <laughs> so I buckled up and I got on with it. And to be honest, I, honest, I hated my learning experience in campus. The, I failed my programming units, the syntax of them were completely, absolutely made no sense to me. And I definitely felt way in over my head. And the entire experience left me, living, uh, left me feeling very less than, small, smaller than my five foot self. <laughs> and for me, that was not a normal feeling. You see, I came from a high school, I was in Moy Girls, Nairobi, better known as Cubs. And when a Kaberian walked into a room, you knew she had arrived. We commanded an aura. We demanded a presence. We were also very loud, but that's not where I'm going with this. <laughs> but we were very confident. I was confident. And all of a sudden, I was not. I felt less than. And I honestly could not wait to finish with that experience and then move away from it. My first job immediately after leaving university was at a local tech company and I was assigned to a senior techie to show me the ropes. He asked me one question, what have you done? Quite simple, right? And I responded that I had just been given the power to read. He looked at me, an almost bored expression on his face, and he says, oh, so we are starting from scratch. <laughs> and there it was again, that less than feeling creeping up. And I knew at that moment that I had something to prove, and not necessarily to him, but to myself as well. And so I rolled up my sleeves and I got to work. I was in tech support. And if you know tech support, it's doing really small things. It's finding the W on someone's keyboard because they can't find it, right? <laughs> But doing these small things, I got to do them with great intention. B basically, like looking for, you know, a quest for excellence. And eventually, I found a niche and I homed in on it, learning everything that I could about it. And people started to notice. The customers would ask directly for me. Certain deployments became synonymous with my name. And I have to admit this, I started to enjoy it, but the most important thing, I was not at scratch anymore. And eventually, just like millennials, I'm a millennial by the way, I started getting restless, and I wanted to move on to the next thing. And so I did what everybody does. I scoured the dailies and you know, on the internet for, for jobs, I applied, I was called in for interviews, because on paper, I looked very good. But even on the way to the interview, I would begin to get into my own head, telling myself that there's no way that I qualified for those jobs, and that they anyway would not pick me. And I guess that permeated, because they would not pick me. And in the midst of all this, Carol walked in with her MacBook. Um, I'd never worked on a MacBook before, but she was assigned to me. And after that, um, I was the only person who did any work for Carol you know, with her laptop or subsequent upgrades that um, she would get. And even after I had moved on from that job, 
Carol would still call me, asking me why her laptop was doing something that it should not be doing. And even now, when I'm very far removed from hands-on tech, if Carol called me, telling me that she could not find that W on her keyboard, I would drop everything and try and find out where has that W gone. How Carol took me under her wing was completely organic. It's not something we planned, it just happened. She would sit next to me as I fiddled with her laptop and she would talk. And as she talked, she would drop a gem or two or nine. That I was a young woman in tech and that I should savor it. And that I should make the most of it. But also that because I was a young woman in tech, I should brace for impact. And not, not, be, not avoid it, but be ready for it. And that sounded scary all those years back. But Carol, since then, I have learned what you meant. Our relationship has become more intentional over the years. And over a glass of wine, Carol and I will laugh about my latest travel escapades. But we will also have candid conversations around the missteps I think I have made, or my current position, current projects I may have, and even over lingering life choices. And the relationship that I have with her set the foundation for the relationships that I would have with women just like her. For you see, I am well surrounded by remarkable women, and Carol is a representative of them. I call them my life's board of directors. These very busy and very important, <laughs> slightly older women, <laughs> This very busy and very important, very loud, <laughs> slightly older women um, who are willing to go beyond, you know, beyond anything to guide me just through my entire journey. They do not, they, they will listen to my less than talk, but they do not allow me to wallow in it. Right? They are affirming, telling me that I am not an imposter that I deserve to be in that room and sitting at that table. Or even just tell me to bring my table in as well. <laughs> right. The respect that I have for them is overwhelming at times because with everything that they have accomplished and everything that they continue to achieve, they still find the time to reach down the ladder and pull me, and not just me, other women as well, up with them. Women helping women. When I write my book, it will be a chapter on its own, and because for me, it has been the rule and not the exception. I am so fortunate not to have known anything else, or maybe it's that I don't focus on the rest. Right. Eventually, I did attend another interview, and Matthew was in this interview. He was joined as well by the regional business director of the company, and when we were done, the director was very candid with me. And he told me that if it were up to him, he would not pick me. Because I did not have the requisite experience necessary. He wanted somebody who would hit the ground running. But I definitely would have a learning curve. It was a sort of career shift. Thankfully, it was not up to him. <laughs> it was up to Matthew. And Matthew picked me. So Matthew and my direct manager basically let me run with it. Creating the strategy, executing it, managing budgets, the entire thing. And I blossomed. I wasn't second guessing myself. My head was holding itself a bit higher, maybe one or two inches. And to date, that workplace is one of my favorite work, past workplaces. About a half, a one and a half years to two years in, Matthew decided to add more responsibilities to my plate. In his words, to see if I could do it. I, I embraced them. It was a matter of sinking or swimming, wasn't it? And to be honest, I swam. Eventually, I won an award on behalf of the company 
um, and you know, for Best Achiever in Africa, and the award ceremony was going to be held in Dubai. I remember attending the ceremony. I remember my company name and my name being called out to go and, uh, and receive the award. And I remember walking up to the stage. But do you know what was going through my mind as I did all that? Do you remember the original business director? He'd written me an email that afternoon, and it said, congratulations, Wangoi. You proved me wrong, and I'm glad you did. All because, Matthew said, let's see if you can do this. Which brings us to, to the now. Along my current journey, I embarked on my postgraduate um, education. And so my inner circle, most of them had already done theirs. And let's just say it's the good kind of peer pressure to have, right? And that's where Jeff comes in. I asked Jeff, who is one of the, the directors at my current company, to write the recommendation for my application. It took me a month to work up the courage to ask Jeff that. Why? Maybe because I thought he would say no, or maybe because I thought the university would not accept me. Looking back, I honestly can't tell you why. But Jeff said yes the minute I did ask him, and the university accepted me. I graduated from Stanford this past March. And <laughs> And after my parents, Jeff was one of the first people that I sent a message to, telling him thank you and let's continue this journey. And after debating, we, we figured that continuing the journey meant a structured mentorship relationship. And I'd never been in one before. I did not want to go in ill-prepared for our first session. So who did I call? Carol. <laughs> And she gave me 45 minutes of her time. And by the time I went in for that first call and subsequent ones that Jeff and I have had, the foundation that she helped me to set has taken me much further than I ever dreamed. Jeff pulls no punches at all. And he has taken to putting me on projects that absolutely stretch me. But also projects that without his help, I would not be on or I would take forever to get on. Jeff knows that he can open doors for me and for other people and he completely relishes doing that. He's a complete example of people wanting other people to succeed and I'm a complete testament to such people existing. And in the course of all this, I, I learned a couple of things about myself. That my quest for excellence was rooted in a paralyzing fear of failure. I was definitely afraid to fail. And when I failed, I just didn't know how to get back up. Second thing is that I was just as smart, or perhaps even smarter than the people in the room. That I had something to say, and even more that they wanted to hear what I wanted to say. And the third thing is that I was the master, the queen of standing in my own way. Right. And all this continue to be sort of rolling shifts that I deal with uh, day by day. But do not get me wrong. I can stand here and tell you that I did everything by myself. That I put in the hard work. I did. That the achievements, the, ta the awards, the promotions have all been me. I mean, honestly, they have. They've been saying my name, right? <laughs> but there are uh, pulling or pushing forces that propel us in one way or another. It could be your parents um, reading the signs of the times and guiding you, gently shoving you toward them. Or it could be that guy at your first job who in no uncertain terms tells you that you know nothing. The women that you meet along the way who both pull you up and push you forward. The boss who nudges you toward your potential. Or the director who throws you into the deep end because he knows you will swim. 
So allow me to raise a glass to these people, to my parents. Maybe I should let them make more of my life's decisions. <laughs> to Carol and my team of very important and very busy women, I am well braced for impact. Thank you. For <laughs> to Matthew and to Jeff, thank you for showing me that there are men who are willing to help us break the ceiling from the top. All right. We live in a culture that values self-reliance. Saying that I am self-made is a good thing. But shifts, and especially my shifts, were not done in isolation. I am because all these people are. Thank you.